16-147 corresponds from Council President John F. Pacheco regarding his request to refer to the solicitor the question of amending the ordinances of the Town of Barville to include provisions for notice to the town and abutters of any intermittent noise such as blow-off, including appropriate penalties for violation. Motion open. Motion open. Second. All in favor? Aye. Sure. Yeah, well, everybody knows why I want this. So, I mean, this is uh, the last time they did a blow off. They gave everybody about three seconds notice. And I think that's, I think it's nonsense, right? I think it's baloney. Thank you. Thank you. notice, we can robocall everybody and everybody know. I mean, that's just common courtesy, and I don't understand why they don't do it. So, if, they, if there was a threat of some kind of financial penalty, perhaps they may pay attention. But I don't even know if we can do that, so that's why I just wanted to refer it to the solicitor. Motion to refer to the solicitor. Second. Yeah, this is showing us the speed. Thank you. I think I want to okay. talk about this. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Sherman, 1035 Wall and White Road, also known as um, Noise Sensitivity Area Number One when it comes to Algonquin Gas. All the people who spoke about the noise that they hear from Algonquin Gas. I hear, I live 2,050, my husband and I live 2,050 feet from the compressor. The noise in my house, as in, it is with Julio Rook's house, is unbelievable. My house vibrates, the noise, and it did get better for a little while, but it's back being loud again. So I appreciate your um, correspondence, um, John, but I also want to bring a couple of things to your attention that I have at prior um, council meetings. Um, under the environmental impact statement that Algonquin was required to do and their compressor noise um, findings, and I believe I gave um, a lot of this information to Mr. Wood at Mr. Wood's request. He asked me for some of the information that I had uh, testified to previously. Under the environmental impact statement, um, there's a provision that says that they acknowledge that they are over the 55 decimal um, limit that's required by the EPA. That's well in advance of the town ordinance. I also want to bring to your attention that they acknowledge that three of the five existing compressor units at this station were authorized prior to the implementation of the EPA noise standards. It's my understanding that some of those compressors were being replaced at some phase in the expansion process. If the old compressors are being uh, replaced, then they should not fall within a grandfather clause. So I'd like you to also consider referring that to the solicitor um, so we can get clarification on that. The environmental impact statement with regard to noise also states um, under Rhode Island, because their environmental impact statement covers several states, that there is no uh, local noise ordinance within the area, uh, applicable area for the Boroughville project. I'd like to have that corrected by the solicitor with Algonquin. We do have a noise ordinance, and they acknowledge that we don't. That needs to be corrected. Um, also, in their 2014 environmental impact statement, they, because the existing noise levels were above 55 decimals, um, and there's a difference, they have to add additional, I believe it's 10 decimals at nighttime um, when we're uh, expected to be sleeping. You can't expect me to be sleeping during this noise. So, but during that period, you have to add 10 decimals to it. They recommended that they file noise surveys with the secretary. Um, the FERC secretary, no later than 60 days. I don't believe that they have done additional noise surveys since the 2014 um, survey that was done. I did get this from the Algonquin representative. So I'm just requesting that you expand. I appreciate um, that you expand your inquiry to the so solicitor and get these um, errors corrected. Um, and also have them address the, the noise level. With regard to the blow off, I request at least 48 hours notice. They need to notify the, you know, the abutters that this happens. I, I was fortunate enough to get an email and I testified to this previously um, from Algonquin only because 
I have communicated directly with them with my displeasure with their um, A, being a neighbor, and B, with the way that they operate that facility. That facility is not safe, and that should also be an agenda item. But specifically with regard to the noise, um, I did get an email, and as I testified before, if I had not alerted my husband, who has a cardiac condition, a pacemaker and a defibrillator, that that blow off was going to happen, he had told me he would have, he would have had a heart attack. The way that that noise went, was so loud, and I wasn't home, I was working. My house vibrated, um, the noise was unbearable. And several of my neighbors weren't home, but they knew something had happened by the way the animals were in their house. So I appreciate you bringing this up. I, I look forward to any um, information that you get from Mal and I wish you well on that, because they're not very well at responding. But we need to hold them accountable. I also asked the solicitor if you would um, consider writing a position in, uh, for FERC. Their information, the Algonquin's information that they have provided to FERC is wrong. We do have a noise ordin ordinance. We do have rules that they have to follow. Um, I think we need to look seriously at this um, environmental impact statement and again ask perhaps even our consultants with regard to the uh, Invenergy project to consider all the noise. My concern is that if they're over 55 decimals, in fact, Mr. Nyland had said to several of my neighbors, oh, well, we won't be that loud. If you have that loud of noise and you add more noise, to me it just makes sense, and I'm not an acoustical engineer, but it makes sense you're going to have more noise. <laughs> um, and I'm so glad that they don't think the abutters' property values will be diminished. But Thank you. Ava Woods, 300 only, Keach Trail, Pasco. Um, speaking about that same issue, I don't know what they consider an abutting property owner or what you consider an abutting property owner, but I'm about a quarter of a mile or half a mile from the, the um, proposed plant. Um, that particular day, I was home sitting at my desk and I thought a plane was flying in my house. My dog jumped up, started barking, my windows were shaking, I'm a half a mile from this plant. Um, I was scared to death, I didn't know what to do and I didn't move. Um, when it finally subsided, I realized that it was the, the power plant blowout. Um, it happened, it went off twice. The second time I heard it, I ran out with my, my phone and I videotaped it. Um, again, it wasn't as loud the second time as it was the first time. What I didn't realize and what I learned from Kathy afterwards, because she, she is one of the only people that gets uh, information about this, <coughs> is that it was a blow-off of natural gas into the air. <laughs> How much natural gas is being blown off with that kind of a noise? You don't, you're not blowing off little bits of gas into our atmosphere with that kind of noise. Um, somebody needs to look into that. I don't know, you know, um, if, if, you know, you can look into this, find out why we have never been notified. I don't think anybody knows we're alive up there. Um, you know, I, this is, this is a horror for my family and I, and um, I really wish that someone would look into this for on our behalf, um, care about you know us who live way out in the sticks. Um, I don't know if you can request that they um, inform people within a within a mile radius, uh, make that mandatory. Um, this is scary stuff for us and I appreciate whatever you can do. Thank you. So just to find the butter, it needs to be at least a mile. Okay, I have a motion. Hi. Uh, my name's Brian Putnam, and uh, I have a small summer cottage. I grew up in Burville. I'm a or Burvillian, as we call ourselves. Um, and I have a summer cottage on Wilson's Reservoir, but I reside in Chapachet, 
which my house is just over the line in uh, on Jackson School House Road, and that's probably a couple miles away. So when Ava can hear it, it it's right in her backyard. And I got home from work, and I thought Jesus was coming down. <laughs> I had to get out of my chair, go outside, look for missiles on Jesus. I was hoping for Jesus, actually. And say, what the heck is going on? So it's not just, a, there's a wide area that this sound is traveling. And I just wanted to say that to the back of everybody else. Okay, we have a motion and a second to refer to the solicitor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Excellent.